Hello and welcome to worship. My name is Susan Shepherd and I serve the pastoral charges of Bell Island and Portugal Cove as well as St. James here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And this is our service for November the 5th and 6th of 2022 and it's our remembrance service. Be careful what you remember because it will give shape to your hopes and dreams. Let us celebrate the richness and diversity of life. As we light our candle, let us remember the peace and light Jesus' message can bring to people in this chaotic world. For thousands of years, Indigenous people have lived in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the centre of their lives and we acknowledge the past generations of Beothic and the present generations of Mi'kmaq people of this island and the Innu and Inuit people of Labrador and their stewardship of these lands throughout the ages. As settlers in these lands, we acknowledge our role in past and present wrongs. We mourn the laughter silenced, the lives robbed and not recorded. We will continue to learn and to do our part to live into the ways of reconciliation. We endeavor to make this a safe place for all people to worship, regardless of race, creed, age, ability, cultural background, nationality, economic status, sexual orientation, or gender identity. And let us begin our worship in prayer. We live in times of uncertainty, Holy One, and so we are filled with many questions, questions about the meaning and purpose of life, questions about the future of the world, questions about the way in which our leaders govern, questions about the value of faith in the face of warfare and hatred, heartache and despair, pandemic and injustice. We gather in worship to sense your presence among us, O God. We gather in worship because we cannot live alone. We gather in worship seeking a renewed sense of your spirit within us, around us, and among us. We gather in worship to be cajoled out of complacency and inspired to action. Lead us to the light of your truth and ho the hope Jesus taught. And we continue our prayers with the Abba prayer, which is written in the spirit of the Lord's prayer. Life giver, pain bearer, love maker, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by all peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread that we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In the times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Our first song is All We Long For, and it's written by Trisha Watts. All we long for is a home, a place to rest our heads, where our children are free to play and grow beyond terrors that we fled. All we long for is a home, a safety from the storms, where the dignity of human life is valued and restored. All we long for is a home, a space in which to breathe, where the stories of our lives are heard and our hearts can freely grieve. All we long for is a home, a haven for our souls, 
For the gifts which peace and love are found, and our future hopes unfold. Now whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to these words now for the meaning they hold for you on this day. And the first reading comes from Micah chapter 4 verses 1 through 4. And this reading comes from the message. But when all is said and done, God's temple on the mountain, firmly fixed, will dominate all mountains, towering above the surrounding hills. People will stream to it, and many nations set out for it, saying, Come, let's climb God's mountain. Let's go to the temple of Jacob's God. God will teach us how to live. We'll know how to live God's way. True teachings will issue from Zion, God's re revelation from Jer Jerusalem. God will establish justice in the rabble of nations and settle disputes in faraway places. They'll trade in their swords for shovels, their spears for rakes and hoes. Nations will quit fighting each other, quit leaning, learning how to kill one another. Each man will sit under his own shade tree. Each woman in safety will tend her garden. God of the angel army says so, and God means what God says. Our second reading comes from Psalms chapter, no, yeah, number 72, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 14. And this is a paraphrase by James Taylor called A Lullaby of Hope. Life will be different for you, my child. You will break out of our prisons of oppression and ghettos of injustice. Your mountains will rise clear in the morning. Your valleys will offer cozy comfort in the setting sun. You will not fall prey to prevailing values. You will never exploit the powerless or profit from people's desperation. Adversity will not grind you down nor will difficulties dissolve your determination. They will only help you grow. A bubble of peace will protect you. A sea of calm will support you. They will all see it in you, my child. Everyone will see it. You will do better than us. You will not be bowed down by despair, nor bent by hatred. You will not be crushed by violence. You will not grovel for power. You will be free to love, to care, to have compassion. For you are precious, my child. For you, things will be different. And our final reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 to 37. And I'm reading from this new book that I have. It's called Good as New, A Radical Retelling of the Scriptures by John Henson. Listen to what I say. Love your enemies and do good to those who want to harm you. Ask God for help to help those who speak badly of you or treat you roughly. Instead of putting up your fist when someone picks a fight with you, lower your guard. If someone steals something from you, don't be possessive about it. Respond readily to everyone who asks for a favor, and if anyone gets a hold of something belonging to you, don't insist on having it back. Treat others as you would like them to treat you. What's so very special about loving those who love you? Even people you label bad manage to do that. It doesn't count if you do a good turn to someone who's done a good turn to you. Almost anyone will do that. If you only lend money in order to make a profit, you're no better than a gambler placing a bet on the favorite. Love your enemies, do good to those unlikely to do anything for you, and lend money to people unlikely to pay it back. This will be your great reward. You'll know you're sharing God's character. God is kind to those who show no gratitude and to those who behave badly. The loving God makes allowances, so should you. Don't think the worst of other people unless you want other people to think the worst of you. 
don't send anyone to the scrap heap, or that's where you'll end up. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. May these words help us to learn from the past and listen for God's word today. We can be opposed to war in principle and opposed to war in all its ugliness and still express our gratitude and love for those who fight on our behalf. Those who serve have had their lives changed so that ours can remain the same. As Joseph Campbell said, a hero is someone who has given his or her life to bring to something bigger than themselves. Last week we celebrated the heroes of the faith during All Saints, those who did miraculous things or gave their lives for their beliefs. This week we remember military personnel, civilians, and even the animals who have been lost in war. Poppies have been a symbol of this remembrance for over a hundred years now. The red poppy is the most famous symbol used to commemorate those who sacrificed their lives in World War I and con all the conflicts that have followed. Wearing a red poppy was inspired by the fields of poppies that grew where many of the battles were fought. It is said that the red poppy represents remembrance and hope. The purple poppy is often worn to remember the animals that have been victims of war. Animals like horses, dogs, and pigeons were used uh, during the war efforts. And, these, and those that wear the purple poppy today feel their service should be seen as equal to that of the human service. In particular, many horses were killed or injured during World War I. Today, service dogs are used in areas of conflict to sniff out explosives, a dangerous job indeed. The black poppy, and I only found out about this very recently, so I don't have a black poppy, but I'll get one for next year. The black poppy commemorates the contribution of black African uh, indigenous and, Cari and people of the Caribbean communities to the um, war effort as servicemen and women and as civilians. The white poppy commemorates people who died in conflict and focuses on achieving peace and challenging the way we look at war. The Micah reading speaks of a time of peace when people will trade in their swords for shovels, their spears for rakes and hoes. Nations will quit fighting each other, quit learning how to kill one another. Each man will sit under his own shade tree and each woman in safety will tend her own garden. That was written a very long time ago and we haven't reached that place yet. We hear of North Korea threatening more nuclear testing and Russia continues its invasion of the Ukraine. And there are countless other wars which do not attract the interest of the world's media that we really don't know about. Can we love our enemies? Will the world be a different place for our children and grandchildren where they are not bowed down to despair, bent by hate, crushed by violence? Will they be free to love and care and to have compassion? I don't know. What I do know is that we must remember. Lest we forget is not just a catchy phrase for this time of year. It's a command that we had best follow. We do not celebrate war in our remembrance ceremonies and services. We are called to remember those who fought, those who died, those left behind at home, those who returned broken, the destruction of cities, farms, homes, and livelihoods. For many decades, we have been somewhat isolated from war but now as first refugees from Syria and now from Ukraine come from, for shelter and aid, we are becoming aware of war's destruction once again. As the song All We Long For said, 
All we long for is a home where all children are free to play and grow, where the dignity of human life is valued, where the stories of our lives are heard, where we can freely grieve, a home where the gifts of peace and love are found and our future hopes can unfold. This Remembrance Day, pause to remember the ones who served and the war's destructive effects on both sides of the conflict. Then pray for the time when nations will quit fighting each other and we learn to forgive. And let us pray. Loving God, on this day in which we remember the war's hope to end all wars, we offer our confession for the ways in which we have not honored the promise of the armistice and peace. We acknowledge that we, as individuals and as a country, have supported the furtherance of wars and rumors of wars with what we have done and said and with what we have left undone and unsaid. We pray for forgiveness and for the strength to speak for peace and for all aspects of our way of living that support peace. May we always remember those who have died as we seek to be peacemakers so that their deaths may be honored as the building of a truly peaceable kingdom. Amen. So this is a small candle lighting ceremony. We light this candle. To remember those men and women who died in the service of our nation in times of war, on peacekeeping missions, and in conflicts in other countries, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We light this candle to remember the victims of war on all sides, especially the most vulnerable, women, children, and those who are sick and disabled or elderly, and those who are already rejected by their society. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We light this candle to remember the service animals who died in support of the troops, the horses, the dogs, the carrier pigeons, and as I learned recently, camels in the African deserts. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We light this candle for the earth and all of creation, recognizing that it too is a casualty of war. We acknowledge the ecological destruction of the earth, the sea, and the air, and pray our creator might help us to restore the ongoing devastation of our natural world. Loving God, make us co-creators with you. We light this candle for the hundreds of thousands of refugees displaced by war who must seek new homelands, a safe and peaceful place to live, a fresh place to start. Loving God, make us instruments of your peace. We light this candle as candle of love to remind us that God commands us to forgive one another and to be reconciled to one another. Loving God, make us instruments of your peace. We light this candle because we believe that Jesus is the light of the world. His light shines in the worst of times 
and nothing ever puts it out. Loving God, let the light of Christ shine in and through our lives. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 679 in Voices United, Let There Be Light. Let there be light, let there be understanding, let all the nations gather, let them be face to face. Open our lips, open our minds to ponder, open the door of concord, opening into grace. Perish the sword, perish the angry judgment, perish the bombs and hunger, perish the fight for gain. Hallow our love, hallow the deaths of martyrs, Hallow the holy freedom, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your spirit turn to language, your people speak together, your spirit never fade. Let there be light, open our hearts to wonder, perish the way of terror, hallow the world God made. I'm come to the end of our time of worship. And I invite you on Friday, November the 11th, to go to your local war memorial or if you're it's, you're unable to take some time to think about those who have served in the past, those who serve today, those who are most affected by war, those who are innocently caught up in it. To think about the ways that we can be more peaceful. May the God of justice guide you in the path of peace. May the Christ of liberation reveal to you the way of new life, and may the Holy Spirit awaken in you the desire to work for harmony. Amen.